So where are we going now? We're going to Topkapi Palace. But the reason I want to go to Palace is because there was a Turkish drama I watched, Sultan Sulaim. Oh my <laughs> God! I want to go and see the harem area where the drama. I don't know if the drama was shot in the palace, but I'm pretty sure it was modeled the same way. And I just want to see how close it was to reality. Obviously, I have no idea what she's talking about. But <laughs> we'll go inside and we'll discover that all together. We just got our tickets for the Pukapi Palace and also the harem section. So there is a ticket you could get without the harem section, but we got the tickets with the normal palace area and also the harem. How much was it? It's 950 liras, which is like 27 pounds. All right, let's go inside and explore. So, give us a bit of background. Uh, what's in harem? Harem is a women only section. Ah, Men okay. are not allowed in there at all. Even the people who work there are mm -hmm. usually women mm -hmm. or they are transgender people who, don't add who are not men. Transgender? Okay. Yes. So, uh, all the rulers of Ottoman Empire were called Sultan. So, does Sultan mean king or not? But nothing on the internet refers to them as kings. It refers mm. to them as head of state and rulers, but not necessarily kings. On that subject, my surname is Sultan, just saying. It's not real, by the way, even though it looks very real. Should I touch it and see what it's made of? Yeah. What if, it, what if it's a real human? It looks very real. So this is the main entrance into the palace. So that was the workers area where eunuchs and the concubines and all those people live. And this is the palace where Queen Mother and Princess, the wife of the Sultan. On that special occasion, sometimes the Queen Mother would sit there, and if the king is around and it's a special ceremony, the king would sit there and concubine and the women would sit there, the queen mother and the, his wife and the concubines would dance him, try and seduce him, the king and yeah and then if the queen is not around then the queen mother would sit on the throne and then it was for special occasions like celebrations and ceremonies and weddings and also when the king came back from the war that's where they would love me. So that was our tour in what's the name of the place? <laughs> We've been here two hours. Topo Capitales. How did you find it? It was very interesting. Uh, harem was my favorite part. Mm -hmm. Still, it was what? very fascinating. Like, you know, just visualizing how women used to live their lives, where they would sleep, how their lives would be, and it would be very much contained inside the castle. Everything is built where it has a purpose. And I think that for me, what I enjoyed the most, uh, we've uh, seen the feet of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the stick of the Prophet Moses. With this, we include our visit to the palace. Now we are going to head towards. I am not kidding. 
the moment we entered the mosque and we saw the first look, our jaws dropped. Like, is wow, we literally. Like, wow. So this is the Hagia Sophia Mosque. Uh, I think I was really overwhelmed by the beauty. Oh my God, the architecture is so beautiful. And um, one thing which I noticed very different from, oh, let me do my dabata. I can handle my dabata. I've done it for many years. Okay, so um, one thing I really noticed is in Pakistan, the mosques have a women's area and a men's area and women aren't really allowed to go to the men's area. Mm -hmm. But here, what's really different is this is open to everyone. It's very welcoming. You can see Europeans, you can see people from all races, they're Muslims, non-Muslims, everybody comes in here, men and women and children, the whole families come in here, people are sitting down, just taking it in. And then there is still an area separately for women to pray. And at the front, there's also an area for uh, men to pray. So there are separate areas, especially for you to do your namaz, but this area is just open to everybody. Yeah, and like you can actually see kids running around, having fun with their families. Such a nice vibe in here. So now we are outside the Blue Mosque and we are about to go inside. All right, so What's the update? So we came to the Blue Mosque, uh, but like Hagia Sophia, you can't just enter. It's still a functioning mosque where prayers are held. So during the prayer time, visitor time is not allowed. You can still go and pray at that time. And uh, now they're opening the doors. So we go inside? Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's go. So we just came out from visiting this mosque, Blue Mosque. In Blue mosque. And how was your experience then? It was very good. So Hagia Sophia visited while tourist hours. This one we visited during the prayer time. And um, it had a very similar feel of Faisal Mosque in Pakistan. It was marble flooring and yeah, because we visited also during prayer time. So they were doing Azan and then after Azan, a bit of prayers. And um, there were people, only Muslims at that time were there. So people who had who were there to pray. And um, so you're allowed to enter one hour before prayer time. And then we went there, we did, uh, like people started doing the optional prayer. So before the namaz, you could do some optional prayers. So that's what most of the people were doing. Some people were reading Quran. And um, a lot of people were taking photos and videos like us. There was an information center for Spanish Quran. Yeah, so they had, yeah, they had a Spanish Quran over there, and I was just reading through it. And I was like, wow, it would be amazing to have Quran in Spanish. I was gonna take a one for myself and a one for my brother, but a, a, those were only available for people that were Muslim. That's something I will definitely go and get it when we go back to UK. But again, the vibe was the, the same. It was very welcoming. They did have visiting hours, but everybody's welcome. If you're a non-Muslim, if you want to know a bit more about Islam, there were like information brochures and also the Quran. And there were some small books like uh, Bible and Quran yeah. and the comparison of that or origin of God. And yeah, very interesting, informative books. Mm -hmm. So now what we're going to do is get some food. Yes, so yes. it's four, nearly 4 p.m. and then we have to start heading back to the airport at 5 mm -hmm. p.m. 
So we have about an hour and we want to try a new area for food. Yeah. All right, let's go. So we found a place where we are going to have the kebabs and that's what just arrived. Yum. Yum. Trying this, oh my god, I don't even want to have this anymore. <laughs> you were doing fine before my food came. Yeah. <laughs> so we are in a bit of a pickle right now. Uh, they just said that we cannot get uh, our seating checked in because we did not do that online even though we did not receive any email that says you should check in before so our bags are gone and we don't know if we are going to be on the flight or not what do you think uh, I hope so I mean I don't know but what they are saying is we we have the booking of the plane, but we don't have the seats reserved because yeah. all the seats are already reserved. I don't know what... that's just stupid. Now, let's see what happens next. Alright, so, update. We got told that we have to wait here and then wait for everyone to board on the plane and then we might get the chance to get a seat. You know all those movies where when women are depressed, they're eating ice cream? That's real. And that's exactly what's happening here. So, we did not know what was going to happen next. But, guess what? We got upgraded to business class. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, Turkish share lines, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a nice flight. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 